Hi, my name is James Newman. Today I'm going to talk to you about variables in the analysis inside of Solonis. So right now I'm inside of our call center analysis. So just to frame a reference, this is an analysis inside of a package, inside of a space, right? So what's handy about analysis is they can be used for kind of quick development usages, um, kind of quick understanding where the data is, things like that. And one of the things I like to do for this is use variables in order to set different fields, dimensions, so I can quickly change in between them. Um, so a variable you access here in the top left with the, the three kind of hamburger signal here. You click that and then you go, you have a selection here. So save formulas, load script, process explorer, KPIs, variables. Each of these will have a video about variables is the first video I'm doing. So we're going to talk about this. There's two different types you can have. It says at the top here, so text replacements. This is what I use to kind of swap in and out between different column tables. So I can actually have the column name in a variable, swap it into an OLAP table, and then quickly change between the different table, table columns that I want to use as a dimension. Or static values. This is where you can actually execute PQL code kind of at runtime and then use that to calculate like a ratio, things like that. Um, this is kind of similar to how you could use a global function um, that I have another video about that you can see about how that works. So this you could use in order to calculate the count of a table and then save that value for other usages. So in this situation, I'm gonna create a text variable, text replacement variable. I'm just gonna call it, um, I like to call it dim for dimension, dim call. And then we're going to just save that as blank for now. And what's going to go in there is the actual column name, table column name pair that we use instead of event. Okay. So what I'm going to go use now is one of my favorite components, which is the button dropdown. So this lets you set actions so that the analysis is a little more interactive. Um, so we're going to use manual input and we want to add a dropdown entry. And this button is going to say, we're going to set it as event. And then that button action is going to be set a variable. And we can actually select which variable we want to use. And so we can use dim call. And then set that, excuse me, go back over here, copy the page, copy this. And then go in here, go back over here. Sorry, that was a little quick. You can hopefully rewind the video and see that through again. I just wanted to grab the column name. So now we just put that in there. So each time you select this button input, It'll set that value, that variable, as this. Okay, so we're going to save that. And now go into the table and update this column to be that variable. And so the variable you can add in from the side on the left here and add in dim column. The naming convention here is that caret paren or percent sign equals the name of the variable and then percent close caret. And that's how you kind of call all the different variables. One quick thing to note, that variables don't really work in comments. So if you were to comment code out like that, it would still try to call the variable, which can cause issues with the compiler. So we're going to use that, refresh that. And so now if we load this, you see it's blank right now. So there's no real, there's nothing in it, right? So now we need to set the, the variable to be event. So we're going to select that and now it fills back in. Uh, so that's great. Um, so you could add in multiple different things. If I say I want it maybe to be the event time instead, I would add another dropdown, add in event time, and then set, set variable, dim call, and then use event time instead. And then set it like that. Um, one other thing I like to do is set two variables. Um, so then you can actually use add another variable and then we could say have dim call and dim column header and then set the event header use the variable actually in up here um, so if you put it up here you could do something like this just for an example I'll do the same dim call it'll be wrong but use that as an example you can actually see it changes the event the header so you can set with one button drop down you can set two variables change it like this so that you can actually update OLAP tables on the fly inside of analyses. So that's one great usage of variables. Hope you find your own. Um, good luck. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.